God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll continue study in the 28th chapter of the book of Numbers. I am grateful to God that you are here with us today. I want you to know that I appreciate you so very much for logging on to watch this ministry. Today's lesson won't be a very long lesson. Uh, we will be doing a lot of reading today. What we're doing, uh, actually in the 28th chapter, um, God has, has instructed Moses to uh, give commandments of the offerings. This is the book of law. Well, actually, he's reinstating these laws that already had been initiated and these offerings uh, God had already instated. But you have to understand that this was coming close, nearing to the end of Moses' life. So he was, uh, and God was giving him to uh, instruct the people and reiterating on many things that they should do. I don't know, us as people, sometimes we forget things or or we lose the importance of things and God have to remind us uh, uh, to do certain things and this was that mode Moses knowing that he's going off the off the scene and uh, uh, not very long from now God had already told him that uh, uh, to go up on the mountain so he could get to see uh, the the promised land he did not get to enter but he did get to see the promised land and uh, and here he's giving instructions to the children of Israel what they should carry on, not just while he was alive. You have to understand a great leader is implanting things in people's lives and in their hearts uh, that will last after he's gone off the scene. And this was the, the, the picture here. God has instructed Moses to uh, tell the people uh, how and when to give their offerings. Uh, he had already told them at one time, but here he's, he's reiterating and letting them know that they should do all of these things. Now, uh, in our last lesson, we were, uh, we read verse 16. I'm going to reread verse 16, and we will get intelligence and, and continue reading in this chapter. The Bible reads, In the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. Now, we talked about the Passover on more than one one occasion uh, in our study, so you know exactly what we're talking about uh, about here. So God is letting them know again. This is the, the importance of this uh, again, uh, and and in the fourteenth day of the first month of the Passover of the Lord, and in the fifteenth day of this month uh, is the feast. Is the feast seven days shall. Uh, unleavened bread be eating be eaten well you got to understand god had specifics and and it's important for us to get those specifics and and do things like god said perhaps he said uh, he could have just left it there and said we'll have a feast on this day uh, well they could have feasted and uh, 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 just prepared whatever they wanted to but this particular passage of scripture uh, unleavened bread during this time unleavened bread uh, was was, was supposed to be consumed. Uh, nothing with leaven in it. Now, somebody might ask, what is leaven? That is the yeast that makes bread rise, and and that's uh, what we would be, what we would know more today as baking powder that you put in bread uh, uh, to make it rise, and make it big and fluffy and and pretty and tasteful and all of those type of things. Uh, but you have to understand uh, the significance of this. And sometime in our lives, we have things that puff us up. Uh, they really don't have anything to do with the substance of the bread, but it just puffs us up. And make us look bigger and, and more people can get a glance at it or a taste of it or, or whatever you want to call it but God specifically uh, asked for unleavened bread and we need to we need to put that even with our life all the extra sometimes needs to come out of our life and we need to deflate ourselves of our egos and deflate ourselves of all of the carnal things uh, and just become raw material for the Lord uh, in fact that's what he wants from us he wants us to just be real Nothing added and nothing extra. Again, I'm reading on the 14th day of the first month of the Passover of the Lord. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. Unleavened bread. Bread with no baking powder, if you please, or no yeast, or no substance to make it rise. Uh, so that it will be appealing to our eyes or whatever the case may be. Now, verse 18 reads, 
In the first day shall be an holy convocation, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no manner of servile work therein. Now that's the first day. Now let's continue reading. But ye shall shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be be unto you without blemish. Here he's letting them know how to offer and what to offer during this time. In verse 20, and their meal offerings shall be of a flour mixed with oil, their tenth part, uh, 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 three tenths part um, shall be offered for a bullock um, and two tenths part for a ram. Uh, well, getting specifics, let's read verse 21. A tenth part shall, uh, uh, shall thou offer for every lamb um, throughout the seven lambs. Uh, well, uh, do I need to read that again? A tenth part shall thou offer for every lamb uh, throughout the seven lambs. Uh, now, uh, you got to understand, one lamb uh, was offered for each day. This was a, a, a convocation time uh, that was supposed to last a full week from the first day all the way up to the seventh day. Verse 22, uh, and one goat uh, for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Verse 23, ye shall offer these beside the burnt offerings in the morning, which is for a continual burnt offering. That word continual is, is important. That means you do this every day, or continual burnt offering. Verse 24, after this manner, ye shall offer daily throughout the seven days the the food of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord it shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and its drink offering well there's some things that are supposed to be done every day no option there and then there uh, there is a different uh, sacri sacrifice made during this seven day period now verse 25 and on the seventh day ye shall have an holy convocation. Uh, ye shall do no servile work. Uh, now in this week, on the first day, there was a holy convocation or a holy gathering uh, where all of the people, all of the children of Israel would gather together uh, and worship. Uh, they would come together. On the first day, there was a holy convocation. And in this verse, on the seventh day uh, shall be a holy convocation. Uh, ye shall do no servile work. Now remember, uh, uh, both of those days, the first day of the week and on the last day of that week, uh, what they were not supposed to do any servile work. Uh, verse 26. Also in the day of the first fruit, uh, when uh, when ye bring a new meal offering unto the Lord, uh, after your after your weeks be out, ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work. Well, what is God doing? God is uh, initiating these times of, uh, uh, of convocation or times of gathering. Whether you, don't, whether you know it or not, it, it is important for us to gather together as a body uh, and worship God collectively. Uh, well, that does not depict what we're supposed to do all the year. We're supposed to serve the Lord and we're supposed to do everything we can to please the Lord every day of the year. But in these times of con uh, convocation, he's asking uh, the body to come together, all of the children of Israel to come together uh, as one in a convocation. And, uh, and he's instructed all of the offerings to do and around this convocation. Shall I read 26 again? And in the day of the first fruit, uh, now this is a different time now. We, we, we went from one celebration, now we're going into another celebration. Uh, uh, also in the day of the first fruit, uh, when the when ye bring uh, new meal offerings unto the Lord, uh, after your week be out, shall have an holy convocation. Uh, ye shall do no servile work. Uh, uh, well, there's going to be a holy convocation then, or a holy gathering then at that time. Uh, 
Then again, you shall do no servile work, but ye shall offer the burnt offerings for a sweet savor unto the Lord, two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year. He's given instructions here. Now, verse 28 reads, and their meal offerings of flour mixed with oil, three tenths part unto one bullock, and two tenths parts unto one ram. Verse 29, a tenth part unto one lamb through the seven lambs, and one kid of the goat to make an atonement for you. Here, talking about a sin offering, and that offering makes an atonement for us. I could go the long way around and talk to you about that atonement, but this is what Jesus did for you. He offered himself for you and me for our salvation as an atonement for our sins. When he shed his blood on Calvary, he atoned for your sins and mine. And one kid of a goat to make an atonement for you, verse 31 reads, and ye shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and, and its meal offerings. They shall be unto you without blemish and their drink offerings. Well, what God is doing, and we're going to read more in our next chapter, going into chapter 29. Uh, uh, the order of the offerings we'll be talking about in chapter 29. Uh, but all of these offerings, God is initiating uh, all of these times of celebration and these times of a holy convocation. Uh, he's, he's initiating uh, and letting the children of Israel know how important they are. Uh, they had already been stated in prior chapters in this book and we read about them in the other books that we have studied in the Old Testament this far where well, here God is initiating them uh, reiterating them letting them know the importance thereof in so many words he's saying this I want you to do I want you to do it well some things we don't understand uh, uh, what God uh, uh, why God would want us to do certain things but I guarantee you if you do what God tells you you to do. He will always bless you. He will always bring you out. He will always be there with you. Uh, why? Because you love him enough just to obey him. Uh, well, we're going to talk about this further. Uh, uh, in our next lesson, we'll be going into chapter 29. We're getting close to the end of the book of Numbers. I think there's 36 chapters in this book. You stay with us and we're going to read it to the fullness. And what we're doing, for those of you that don't know, we're teaching through this Bible, verse by verse verse and chapter by chapter. I, I guarantee you, if you stay with us, your knowledge of the scripture will go. I say all the time, uh, well, there might be times that uh, the, the, what we're reading is not really exciting or, or it's not doing anything for you, you would think uh, uh, spiritually, but if you stay with us as we read through the Bible, uh, you'll be able to get things out of the Bible and they'll be a blessing to you. They will cause your spirit, man, to come alive. Uh, I want you to know God is with this ministry. I thank God we were trying to, uh, I know David got in trouble for counting numbers, uh, but yet we were talking about it on today. I was on a long telephone call, a business call uh, with the gentleman and trying to link up all the things that, that I do. And, and uh, uh, we have, uh, I found out even on the day that, that uh, so many places that we broadcast on the World Wide Web, there's no way for us to get the numbers of, uh, uh, of what is going on, how many people are watching, and how many people uh, are, are, are tuning into this ministry because we broadcast on so many places, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Google, and YouTube, and, and LinkedIn, and so many places, this signal goes directly to people. Uh, those numbers do not come in to where uh, the automatic counter is, so there's no way to know uh, how many people are watching. I, I do know that uh, I stumbled into one place and saw numbers uh, on one day. There was over 26,000 people uh, watch one of our lessons, and, and that was the best day that I've seen in any numbers, but that's a lot 
lot of people. Uh, but uh, that that was just one day. Uh, so, but there's no way to know that we uh, what we are actually doing, how many people that we are actually reaching. Uh, and I praise God for all of you to take the time to write me a note or send me that thumbs up or uh, write me an email to let me know that you're watching. It is a blessing to me. Uh, I thank God for all that He's doing through this ministry. I thank God for all of our friends in far far countries and foreign lands, Africa, South Korea, Australia, Sweden, Canada, all over the United States of America. I appreciate you from the depths of my heart. I want you to know that I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. If you would like to contact me for any reason, you can write me at the Work with Chester Ministries, Post Office Box 2006 Zero three, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78220. Uh, you can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, you can also uh, reach me if you listen to me by Facebook. You can inbox me. If you listen to me through Twitter, you can inbox me uh, or on Google. Uh, there's a comment section there. When you comment, I will respond to you. When you email me, I will respond to you. When you inbox me, I will in respond to you. Again, I love you, my friends. I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.